Uh, good morning, everybody. Yes, uh, this morning I will talk a little bit about uh, curation, uh, gene ontology annotation using phylogeny. And uh, so we developed this phylogenetic annotation with Go, Pan Go project. And I will also quickly talk about uh, an important major milestone, milestone which, uh, with the project. So, first, what's the principle of the project? The principle is quite easy. We use manual uh, Go annotations, sorry, here. Uh, the manual annotations are represented in a matrix with green cells, and these manual annotations are associated with phylogenetic trees, here. <clears throat> and the aim of the project is first to review manual annotations, all the annotations we have for several projects, and using associated uh, uh, phylogenetic trees, we can try to infer which genes can be associated with which function. Because as you will see, uh, sequence similarities of proteins is not enough to infer a function. And you can see already here, if you look about on, on this tree, uh, you have several evolutionary events. For example, here we have a kind of duplication event an ancient duplication event providing different blocks. And when you look at the annotation matrices, each column corresponding to a specific uh, <clears throat> Go term, for example, you have here one annotation, one function, only specific to this block, annotated to this human gene and to this mouse gene. Another function here is only annotated to this block. So here we could infer that maybe during this duplication event, uh, there was the creation of different blocks, and this block might have lost this function and won this function. Uh, this family, in fact, is the ubiquitin activating enzyme family, and both functions here are quite related. So the functions in this case are more changes of function, and it's a change of the substrate of the different proteins. But anyway, in many cases, we, have, we can have total loss of functions. And so one take-home message to take here is uh, don't just rely on sequence similarity. Sequence similarity does not mean function similarity. And this is the way we make our annotation. So for each of these functions, you see in blue is the annotation. This part got the annotation to this function, the rest of the tree got the part, uh, or, uh, got this annotation. This is a very, very tiny part. This is a very big family. We have over 1,000 uh, sequences. So we do this over the whole tree. I took this simple example just to show you the, 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 how we proceed. And here we, 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 we can make, thanks to comparing annotations and the evolution, we make what we call functional evolutionary modeling. And thanks to these functional evolution models, we can be more sure about what we annotate. So uh, when you make blast analysis, take into account this, and uh, don't think it's because two sequences are similar that they might have the similar function. So this was the principle of our project. So let's now come to the uh, major milestone. A uh, few months ago, we annotated, we finished the review of all the protein families containing at least one human gene. This means that uh, now we cover about 17,000 human genes. What not, was not possible to have all the human genes because for some families we didn't have enough experimental data to make these evolutionary models and to infer some functions. But at least what we can say that uh, Sorry. Uh, <clears throat> for over 80% of the human genes, we can now associate at least one Go term. And most of, for most of them, we have more Go terms. There are two other important things in this project is that uh, when we make these annotations, we really select uh, the most relevant Go terms. 
Here is an example of another family. Also, again, a little part of the tree. Uh, these proteins are involved in immune response. And uh, you have here another matrix, and you, we have many green, green cells, and we have a lot of annotations. Uh, the aim of the project is not to annotate all the, uh, all the go terms that we have for a family tree. Uh, we really want to, to annotate the core functions of a family, which means that we select what we think the most relevant terms. And in blue, you see what we have annotated. Uh, you have some columns in which you have these white dots. These white dots correspond to more general terms. And usually when you have uh, an annotation with a white dot, you have also somewhere a more precise child term and a more precise annotation. It's important because uh, depending on the tree sometimes, you can annotate a very precise term or you can only annotate a, a less precise apparent term. So this really depends on the topology of the tree. So this is important because finally, when you look at the numbers, uh, usually for Pango annotation, we only use uh, 10 to 20 percent of the annotations. So in a way, we reduce a little bit the background noise. And this could be important for other projects, like the GoCam project, uh, which uh, is uh, involved in modeling pathways using Go, because we reduce the noise the background noise, but we also feel some gaps for some species. Because here I told you about human uh, annotation, but of course, Pango is not a human-centric program. We are working on 142 species, which are the, the ones which were used to make the, 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 these, these trees. And uh, what I showed here for human can be applied for all the 142 species. We had to begin with someone, and I thought, yeah, human, human annotation could be a nice milestone. Another lesson learned from this is uh, what's the contribution of all these different species to the annotation of what we call now the human functionum. Of course, human in blue is the biggest contributor to its own annotation. We have of the direct experimental annotation, but we have also uh, inference from human parallels because we have really big families. For example, you have the transporter families uh, for which you have many, many parallels. Uh, a big difference between those two annotations is that uh, this might be quite detailed annotations because it's direct annotation to a gene. When we infer from one parallel to another, as I said, it's dangerous just to propagate to to infer a function, a precise function, because functions are moving. And similarity of sequence is not similarity of function. I'm sorry I repeat it, but it's really important. So uh, these annotations, I would say, are more, are less specific, less uh, <clears throat> detailed annotations. But anyway, it's a big part of the functional. And then, of course, all the other mo uh, model organisms are really contributing a lot, especially mouse and rat. And when you, you follow evolution, you think, oh, the farther you go from human, the less you have contribution. It's not totally true. We have a big part of Drosophila melanogaster, so, and of course, the, the yeasts are really good models, even to uh, understand uh, what's happening in human. And even E. coli, E. coli contributes uh, to 0.7% of the annotations. But you have to keep in mind that total annotations, uh, we have about 200,000 annotations in total. So even 0.1%, it's over 1,000 annotations. So 1,000 E. coli annotations that contributed to the uh, understanding of the human. And of course, we have 142 species. So there is a big part from all the other species. So this is a work done by the Pango team, which is here. The Pango team is led by Paul Thomas. I have also to mention, of course, the former members. And I would uh, especially acknowledge Susie Lewis, because she was the person who first developed this nice tool with the matrix associated to the, to the, the, the uh, 
sorry, the phylogenetic trees. And of course, this wouldn't have been possible without the whole Go community, without all these people who provided the annotations, the Go annotations, which, is, which are really our, uh, our material to, to, to feed our annotation. Also, a big thank to the people that participated to the correction, because uh, there was a big work of correcting annotations, and many people sent in feedback. And finally, Last but not least, I would like to thank you for listening and for your attention. Thank you. Thank you.